eight social media influencers have been charged with securities fraud by the U.S. government. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, these influencers use Twitter and the messaging app Discord to manipulate exchange-traded stocks as part of a $100 million fraud scheme. The legal complaint alleges that these influencers bought certain stocks and encouraged their followers to do the same. Once stock prices rose, they reportedly sold their shares without disclosing those plans, raking in roughly $114 million. So, Amisha, it turns out that social media influencers can engage in, you know, their own version of insider trading and defraud their their followers just like everybody else. Things that are not surprising at all. (laughs) I have very little faith in social media influencers in general, but this case is extremely problematic because they willfully defrauded people, first and foremost, and then they decided to pull out as soon as they had, again, insider trading, somewhat information of where the market was going to go. I don't feel, I I would like to see how this plays out for them because um, their social media influencers are are still a very new category of wannabe business, business model and business makers. And um, there are so many people who aspire to do the same types of things that they do, basically sit at home, create um, create videos, chat online, and somehow make money hands over fist. Um, but there is a lot of fraudulent behavior that is involved in this process. And I think that it is a, a new avenue to kind of investigate because I don't see any signs of this stopping. But in this case in particular, because it is so readily mirrors a lot of what we see and what we try to prevent um, in these markets, where this case goes and how they're able to not only elevate but prevent this from happening in the future is going to be, I think, proof positive of how we can kind of stump out some of the some of the nefarious acts of social media influencers, but also in some ways, and I know that you know the conservative right as well as libertarians don't necessarily always believe in regulation, but how do we get to a point, Bacha, to where this type of thing doesn't become widespread? Yeah, you know, to me, this it just seems like um, the meeting of an economy that's overly reliant and based on finance and an attention economy and a culture that's overly reliant on attention and celebrities and influencers, right, coming together in this like perfect storm of fraud. But, you know, from another point of view, like those are both in a way I don't want to say fraudulent But, um, you know, what is the value of an influencer? What is the value of influence? What is the value of celebrity? And I think you could ask a very similar question about, you know, finance. I mean, obviously, there's a certain level of finance that you want. You want people to be able to invest in things. You want, you know, new companies. You want, uh, you know, you, you know, obviously, America is sort of a very entrepreneurial place. But, you know, we used to be a country where the largest sector of our economy was in production, was in building things, making things that average people used, you know, and now the biggest sector of our economy is in finance. And, you know, this leads to all sorts of problems. You know, it used to be that the smartest kid in the class, right, would become an engineer and build things, right? Build new things, find new ways to build better cars. Now the smartest kid in the class becomes a banker, you know, becomes an investment banker, has a hedge fund, right? You know, and it's just, it's really Or creates a TikTok video. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Right. You know, it's really shifted the you know, we've shifted away from valuing like real things towards this much more ephemeral way of doing business, of consuming culture. Right. You know, you used to go come home at night and like, you know, watch a movie. Now you come home and watch, you know, a thousand TikTok videos by influencers. Right. It's just and and I think that's this, this to me is just so it's so obviously was something that was going to happen. Right. I'm sure these social media influencers didn't even know that they were doing anything wrong, right? I mean, how would they, right? Like, they're kids, a lot of them, you know? How would they even know that? But it's, to me, it's sort of like, um, exposes a much deeper problem with the way that we are both doing business and consuming culture because it's, it's moved away from real value and towards much more speculative things. You're right. And I also think that there is a cultural aspect to the and and not to say that it hasn't always existed, but I think it's amplified now. And social media has definitely helped to get it there with the get rich quick schemes, because we're seeing this time and time again. Nobody really wants to or very few people really want to put in work Um, to your point uh, where there was a time where young kids who were kind of math and science and saw this dream coming true and they wanted to be creators. They wanted to be inventors. They wanted to be engineers. Now we're seeing more and more people who literally just want to make a video and get rich or people who want to somehow 
somehow get brands to endorse them for random things that they're doing on Instagram or TikTok. At this point, I don't know how to culturally kind of bring it back to where, again, to our points earlier in the show, to be competitive. Um, competition is not based on who has how many followers on Instagram or TikTok. As a nation, there has to be an economic value to not only what we produce, but the minds of future generations. And I feel like they're becoming a whole lot of like wasted soup at this point by being on social media all day long, trying to figure out the newest dances, trying to figure out ways in which they can somehow create an alluring, um, an, an alluring profile to get brands to actually endorse them. And I'm not a social media hater. I have social media. I don't have TikTok because I, I leave that to children. But I do think that there is something to be said about us moving towards an element of society where it is so frivolous, it is so ridiculous. I can't wait for the social media influencer culture to die, quite frankly, just like the butt injections that the Kardashians got taken out. <laughs> well, listen, I'll just say, you know, before people accuse us of being like, oh, in my day, we didn't have the TikToks, you know, TikTok, which is which is a Chinese company, um, a subsidiary of ByteDance, is banned in China. And I know I talk about this a lot, but, you know, it, it they they created something that is very disastrous and then they exported it and banned it for their own kids and they have a sort of Chinese version of it but you, after 40 minutes it kicks you off you can only log in for 40 minutes a day because they don't want their children to be zombies who their number one aspiration is to become a TikTok influencer and I think that that is you know there's there's you know you know wisdom in that you know wisdom from our greatest adversary um, you know th th this is something different I mean and I think you know people who, who are on I'm also not on TikTok because I don't want the Chinese to have access to my entire phone but um, you know people who are on it, they do describe it as being different. And I, I say this a lot, like, look at the face of a child who's on TikTok. I mean, you're seeing something very different than, you know, something that, you know, you could scroll Instagram for how long already before you shut it and, and you know, get on with your life. You can scroll TikTok to Twitter for only so long. Then you, um, it is something different. And um, I, 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 I'm worried about it. I'm, and I'm glad to see that there's energy now um, in the U.S. Congress to potentially ban it. Yeah, that was going to be my next point. It's not just China that is banning it from or reducing it for, for the use of young kids. We're also seeing not only at the federal level some moves that are, you know, steadily in motion, but also at the state level in particular, Virginia being one of them, where they are banning it for use in the, in the public square, particularly among their employees and other things, um, trying to kind of reel it in. A lot of that is for security and privacy purposes, as you, as you alluded to, but trying to just make it not what it has become across America, I think, this place where, you, yes, you have an exchange of ideas and you have people who are creatives kind of taking off there. But there's also a very dark side to TikTok, especially when it comes to youth, that I don't think that we have fully seen the negative effects of just yet, even though psychologists have warned about it since its inception. Um, in the next few years, I predict that we definitely will, and it's not going to be a good place to be. So, Amisha, can I get you to praise former President Trump, who tried to ban TikTok? You know what? At the time, I was like, you know, this man's crazy. Um, the more we look into it, the wiser he has been on that particular thing. You know, I, I, will, I will give you that. Great. I love when someone can acknowledge the truth after the fact. I myself am a big proponent of changing my mind. I've been wrong about a lot of things, so I, I love hearing that. Well, we will have more rising right after this. <laughs> 